I once heard someone say that the reason why we self-sabotage or the reason why we procrastinate is because we believe that we are not worthy of or valuable enough to receive the rewards that would come from us achieving those goals or completing those goals or doing the tasks that we procrastinate or avoid doing. And when that person made that statement and I took some time to actually meditate and sit with it and think about what they were saying and reflect back in my own life, I started to see how many times in the past, I had actually gone in my own way and stopped myself from manifesting my dream life simply because I didn't believe that I was worthy enough of receiving the rewards that would come from completing said tasks that I would continuously avoid, whether that was launching a business, working out, exercising, going out on that date, talking to that cute boy, whatever it was. I felt in one way or another that I was not deserving of the positivity or the reward that would come from me taking that leap of faith, from me taking that risk, and from me doing something that may be out of my comfort zone. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the things that you can do to start getting out of your own way. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that is stopping you from manifesting your dream life into this 3D reality is you. You're the only person stopping you from being able to manifest your own dream life. And once you stop making the excuses, once you stop blaming everybody else, and once you take accountability and responsibility for the role that you play in your life, you actually start to take control of your own life, which will help you in literally manifesting your dream life into this world. And that was a hard pill that I had to learn to swallow as well. I had to start getting real with myself and checking myself before I wrecked myself and realize that all the times that I actually stopped myself from doing that task or from doing that thing that made me uncomfortable or from completing that task or from taking that leap of faith, it was rooted in two things. One, that I was afraid. And two, that I felt like I wasn't good enough or worthy enough of receiving whatever reward was on the other side. Whatever fears you have can be connected back to these five core fears. And that's death, illness, lack of love, criticism or judgment of others, and death. And so when you start thinking about these five fears, start thinking about which of those fears is actually limiting you the most. For example, I know that the two fears that create the most problems in my own life are lack of love, like I'm afraid that people aren't going to love me, and two, poverty. I'm afraid of not having money. And when you're able to start recognizing what your fears are, where they're rooted, why they're rooted in that thing that they're rooted in, you start to be able to free yourself from the fake chains, from the illusions, from the narratives, from the self-limiting beliefs that are connected to those fears. Because you start actually seeing that there's no validity in those fears. They're just narratives, they're stories, there's the over-analysis paralysis that happens internally within our own inner dialogue that oftentimes creates such a storm in our mind that we therefore start procrastinating or avoiding that thing that we know we need to do in order to manifest our dreams and reach our goals. One of the biggest things for me was actually launching this YouTube channel and creating content that wasn't tarot based. I was afraid that I wasn't going to be loved by you guys and I was afraid that it was going to make me poor, but I also knew that I needed to do it. And so as you're working through your fears, start recognizing where the stories are coming from, where the limiting beliefs are coming from and how they are playing a role in actually stopping you from being able to manifest your dream life. Because you, in your highest expression, when you're connected with the highest expression of you, which is you at your purest, most highest authentic self, that version of yourself that exists in all of you, when you start embodying that version of yourself, you not only start getting rid of the fear because you start seeing the fear for the illusion that it is, but you also start gaining self-confidence. You also start believing in yourself. You also start remembering your own worth, your own value, and above all, you love yourself authentically and unapologetically. So you're not afraid to show up in your highest expression because you know at your core that you will be accepted and rewarded for being your authentic, truest, most highest version of yourself. Now, one of the biggest things that you can do to start getting out of your own way is to start calling out the shit. Start calling out the shit that you shove under the rug, the things that you stop yourself from doing. Is it starting a YouTube channel? Is it doing your taxes? Is it talking to that cute boy or that cute girl? What are those things that you are stopping yourself from doing? And start getting to the root as to why. The next thing you're going to want to do is, well, just do it. 
Start doing it. Stop making the excuses. Little by little, start putting yourself out there. Start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Start walking towards the edge, thinking not that you're going to fall down flat on your face, but rather that you're going to fly and that you're going to succeed and that the universe is always conspiring to work in your favor. One of my favorite mantras to use is universe, show me how good it's going to get. Even in the days where I have snot coming down my face and I've been crying for hours on end because I'm a crybaby and I'm very honest about the fact that I love to cry. Okay, I've got a Pisces moon and a Pisces rising. When I'm in those moments of deep sorrow or deep fear or where I'm feeling like a victim, right? When I'm, when I'm in my ego or when I'm in my shadow self, I start to remind myself that it's not my shadow or my ego or my fears or my self-limiting beliefs or my lack of self-love that is in control, but rather me at my highest expression. And when I remember that it's me at my highest expression, that my highest, most authentic version of myself is within me, and that when I show up in that version of myself when I embody that and I emit that out into the world energetically through my presence, through my energy, when I shine that light out into this world, I know that everything is going to work in my favor. I start telling myself that I need to remember in those moments that the universe will always show me how good it's going to get. And so use that mantra, the two mantras actually that I love using, universe, show me how good it's going to get. And the universe is always conspiring to work in my favor. Oftentimes we self-sabotage as a defense mechanism because we believe we're not worthy enough of receiving whatever success is on the other side of completing that task, like I shared with you before. So in essence, we basically create this narrative that we loop in our mind. For example, if I never talk to that guy who I think is super cute, then he can never break my heart and therefore I will never be hurt in love again. And therefore it validates the story that you tell yourself that you're not lovable enough or that you're not worthy enough. The same could be said for money or health, right? If you turn around and say, well, I'm never, I'm never going to get that promotion because I'm not good enough. It feeds the story that you're never going to be rich or that you're never going to have enough money and therefore you won't lose money. And every single self deprecating thought or idea, the self-sabotage that plays around in your mind is created through that self-defense mechanism. If you never have it, then you can never lose it. If you never have it, then you don't have to experience the vulnerability, right? Vulnerability is basically putting ourselves out there and not knowing how we're going to be received out into this world. It's the fear of rejection. We fear being rejected. We fear being not valuable enough. We fear failing. And so we get stuck in these fears and through the self-defense mechanism, we avoid the rejection. We avoid having to face our fears. And so part of being able to get out of your own way is recognizing and acknowledging that, you know what? You may fall, but you may also fly. You may also succeed. You may also achieve all your dreams, all your goals. So it's really about changing the story, the narrative, not to what if I fail, but what if I succeed? What if I'm abundant beyond my wildest dreams? And in being able to switch the script, being able to alternate the mindset, the story that we tell ourselves, the narrative that we tell ourselves, we're able to get one step closer to being able to achieve our dreams and actually manifest them into fruition in, in this life, in this earth, okay? The other thing to recognize when you are experiencing these moments of self-sabotage or procrastination or where you find yourself stuck, right? Where you find yourself like you can't move forward Forward, like you can't progress or you're not sure how or why or when or how or all these stories that you're telling yourself internally in your inner dialogue, get to the root of your why. Why are you doing this in the first place? What is your why? For example, I know my why is my son. Everything that I do is for my son and to help women. So in my why, in my mind, every time that I start getting into the self-sabotage, or the self-limiting beliefs, or I start getting into the procrastination, I remember my why. My why is my son, and my why is every single woman that I'm meant to empower and support and inspire so that they can transform their lives as well. And when you start acknowledging and recognizing and giving power to your why, you start fueling and empowering yourself to get out of your own damn way so that you can succeed and be able to achieve everything that you desire in your life. Oftentimes we avoid the negative self-talk. We avoid actually paying attention to the inner dialogue that's happening deep within our subconscious. We 
pretend that it doesn't exist or we shove it under the rug. You know, one of my favorite sayings is the shit we shove under the rug. When you unearth that shit, when you start unearthing that negative self-talk that you have internally in your mind, you actually are able to put a spotlight on it. And when you put a spotlight on it, you expose it. You expose it for what it is, which is negative self-talk. Oftentimes the narratives, the stories, the self-talk, the inner dialogue that's happening inside of your mind, it doesn't even belong to you. It's not even yours. It's actually connected to somebody within your upbringing that had some sort of influence on you or played a role or impacted you in one way or another. And what you've done now is you've started to adopt their own story, their own negative self-talk, their own narrative, their own faulty belief system, and you've made it your own. So when you start actually putting the spotlight in it, when you illuminate it, when you expose it, you can get to the root of where it actually originates from and start detaching yourself from it. And if you feel like you're currently stuck right now, if you feel like you're limited, you feel like, you know, you are in this precipice between this place and the place that you know you're meant to go to and you know there's a bridge, but you're stuck in the in-between and you can't get from point A to point B, take a look at the description box below and book a discovery call with me for a half hour. I'm happy to help you out. We can map some stuff out together and get you to that next step in your life so that you can finally unlock your dream life and transform your life and get unstuck, right? Who wants to feel stuck and unhappy? I know I did not like when I was living like that. There are two other things that you can do to start getting out of your own way and start manifesting and unlocking your dream life. And one of those things is to stop comparing yourself to other people. You are not in competition with anybody else. You are in competition with yourself. The only person that you are designed to be in competition with is you. Where do you want to be in your life and where are you at right now? That is the only thing to pay attention to. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop wanting and wishing and hoping and dreaming that you were where they're at because they have their own journey and you have your own journey too. There's one of these oracle cards that I really love that says, trust the wave that you came on. Time is not running out. You're exactly where you're meant to be. And while I was transitioning from creating tarot here on YouTube to creating these new spirituality, empowerment, self-love videos, I experienced many times the comparison game. And that comparison game is so damn toxic and so damn self-debilitating. It literally is such a debilitating practice to experience because all it does is create more negative self-talk. All it does is bring you down, bring your energy down, bring your vibration down. And none of those things are actually helping you to be able to get from where you're at to where you want to be. So stop comparing yourself to other people and recognize that you're only in competition with yourself. Set out a plan, set out a goal, book that discovery call with me and I'll help you do that as well so that we can get you to where you want to be in life. The last thing that you're going to want to do to start getting out of your own way is to start surrounding yourself with positive influences. The people whose company you keep are a direct reflection of where you're going to be in your life. And this was something that took me a long time to understand because I truly believe that I could have friends in all these different areas of life. I believe that my friends could range from all these different people and that I would be perfectly okay. What I realized more and more though, however, is that like attracts like. And the more that I hung out with certain groups of people, the more that I would drop down my value, the more that my goals would diminish, the more that I would actually not have the ambition or the drive because I was living in their vibrational frequency. When I started to hang out with people who had similar ambitions, similar goals, similar visions, similar values to me, everything started changing because my mindset started changing. I started having conversations that were on a higher octave. I started embracing and celebrating what it looked like to live a different life and to experience life on a different frequency. I started to think about where I wanted to be in three years and five years and what I was going to need to do in Hmm. order to get there. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? Cool. And I started to realize, (laughs) where was I before I was rudely interrupted? Um, And I started to realize that the people whose circle I kept around, when I ran with the right crowd, I had more ambition. I had more vision. I had more drive. And I was more focused on my goals. Whereas when I hung out with other crowds, with individuals who didn't necessarily have the same goals, the same visions, the same dreams and aspirations that I had, I would therefore drop down to meet them at their level. 
And this isn't to say that you have to, you know, cut out all your friends or say goodbye to everyone. It's more about self-reflecting and acknowledging where you're at in your life right now and really what it's going to take you to get from where you're at right now to where you truly want to be and what sacrifices you're willing to make and what you're willing to do to be able to get there. How much do you truly love yourself? How much do you truly value yourself? How much energy and time commitment, how much of an investment are you going to be putting into yourself in order to get out of your own way, stop procrastinating and stop self-sabotaging yourself from actually manifesting and living your dream life. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. If you watch the video after this one, it's all about how to get unstuck and change your life. So if you're feeling a little bit stuck right now, you're going to want to watch the video after this one. If you want to book a discovery call with me or take a look at my academy or book a one-on-one -on -one session, all the details are down there below. We will see you in the next one. See you later, alligator. Peace out. Bye.